Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial series and it's time for the best bit. This is where we do some preset deep dives, where we deconstruct a preset, reverse engineer um, how the sound is put together and that really helps solidify all of the concepts we've discussed in previous videos and gel everything together into a working tool. You know, we want to make real world sounds with this thing. So this is the sound that I've chosen for the first uh, episode, first deep dive. It's kind of a super saw. And this is a patch, which means we don't need to worry about the multi. I initialized the multi before I started and I've loaded the single patch into part number one. So we don't have anything else going on at the multi level. And you want to develop a system for working with Omnisphere. There are an awful lot of hidden menus and difficult to reach places that don't always have an indication from the user interface that there's actually anything under them. So develop a system, I'll show you what mine is, obviously that's what these are all about. And the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to the main page and have a look if there's any patch wide settings. And there are, the entire synth is set an octave low. So we already know it's a bass oriented sound, you know, it sounds good in those deep kind of bluff spaces. And we've got a zero dB gain. The patch is initialized to minus six, that's the standard. So there's been a little bit of gain boost on this. Other than that, everything else is pretty straightforward. And having had a quick scan at the main page to make sure there's nothing overarching affecting the entire sound, now we can start thinking about layers. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is turn all of the effects units off. Not interested with them, we'll deal with them later. I'm also going to disengage layer B. So now we're able to focus in on layer A and hear what it sounds like. So it's a really deep, heavily filtered pad. You can hear that a lot of the high frequencies have been cut away. And uh, an initial glance at the, at the layer tells us that we've got a filter setting. So first things first, let's just turn it off. Let's see what effect that has. And back on again. Pretty obvious. That's where all the high frequencies are going. We can also see that the cutoff is being modulated. Uh, we'll come back to that shortly. Let's have a quick look at the filter envelope because obviously anytime the filter's on, then we have an envelope being applied to it. And if we head into the filter zoom, we get a, a, a better a better look at it. And we can see that we've got this uh, attack decay thing which is introducing, that's what's giving us the sweep of introducing, letting the, letting the frequencies in and then taking them back out again. If I mess with this, it becomes more obvious what it's doing. So now that we've seen the overall shape of the envelope, let's have a look what's affecting this cutoff value. Head into the modulation zoom and we can see that it's the modulation wheel. So let's, uh, let's mess with the mod modulation wheel. So as I move my wheel, you can see the little white light here. Go from minimum to maximum, so. So yes, you can hear the bright frequencies coming in, but you can also tell that they're not all coming in. You know, we have an amount slider here that enables us to control the maximum effect that this modulation wheel is able to have on the cutoff and it can't actually get it as far as if it's never been turned on in the first place. In other words, some of the high frequencies are always being cut away. We just get to control to a certain extent how many. Let's have a look at the other um, modulation value that's being applied to layer A. Obviously we've got a couple on layer B, we'll worry about them later. LFO2 is being mapped to sample start. Let's have a quick look at LFO2, see what it is. It's a sine wave at a rate of 3.4 hertz there or thereabouts. And by affecting the sample start, it means that whatever our sample is, and we'll have a look at it in a moment, the LFO, because it's a sine wave and it's constantly varying, is going to choose new points in that sample to begin playback from. And that means you're gonna lose a lot of the static kind of military precision of 
starting the sample from the beginning every single time. It's a, it's a lovely way to randomize across the entire sample length um, its, its initial start value. So in order to really make sense of that, we have to have a look at what the sample actually is. Well, it's polyvirus A, but because we've got so many other effects on the layer, it's a little bit difficult to narrow down exactly what the, the sound itself is, is doing. So what I like to do is use one of my empty multi-slots, and I'm going to lo load the polyvirus A sound into a completely empty slot. So if I head over to my uh, multi-mixer and just solo part two instead, now we're only going to hear that sound on a completely dry channel. And now that we've got that, we've got a good overall understanding of what we're playing with. And if we have a look at it in the, oscill in the oscilloscope, you can see that it has natural motion. There is a natural oscillation to it. And that's gonna help us when we're looking at things like LFOs and other modulation sources that are being applied to this sound, not to get too carried away with making any assumptions as to what effects are being applied to the sound. The sound itself is intrinsically moving. So having heard the sound in isolation, we can now get rid of it again, mute it, head back to part one. There's our sound again, our edited sound. So our challenge now is to try to find out what that sample start modulation um, sounds like. And in order to help me with that, I'm going to throw the filter away. I don't want it kind of polluting the sound. It's just one more effect that we don't need right now. Every time I press a kick, you get a slightly different version of the sound, as opposed to... Exactly the same every time. You can see it on the oscilloscope as well. Obviously, once the sample's going, Omnisphere itself takes care of the looping of the samples. It's not a fully featured sample engine like something like Halion might be. Um, the sound sources are carefully curated by Spectrosonics to give you something that's like real world usable, but giving us the ability to modulate um, where in the sample the sound begins to play from um, really helps to introduce some kind of dynamic quality to the sound. So that's layer A dealt with. We'll turn that off and head over into layer B instead. And now we've got the Blue Fizz B sound source. And so the first thing that we're going to do is head over to our multi again. And this time we're going to load um, Blue Fizz into the, into the part. Now, just bear in mind that it's pre-selected the last layer I was looking at. So we don't want to accidentally listen to this other sound as well. So that's the Blue Fizz B sound all on its own. And in the context of the preset, much, much thinner. And there's also other stuff going on. There's got a filter sweep in there. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Now those uh, high frequencies, that loss of, um, low stuff is coming from the, the high pass filter. So high pass filter throws low frequencies away and retains the high ones. If I turn it off, much, much thinner. And the cutoff on a high pass filter is kind of back to front. When there's no cutoff, you get all the sound. And then it, we gradually throw more and more low frequencies away. And we've also got a filter envelope over here. Same kind of affair with the, the fast but not immediate attack. I'm 
and having heard all that, we'll turn the filter off. Now, if you recall earlier, I said there was a filter sweep in this sound. You see it in Insight as the frequencies sweep through the band. That's coming from the unison. Let's have a look in here. So that effect is known as unison detune. When you have multiple voices stacked on top of each other and offset, then you get this kind of filter sweep effect to the sound. It's not coming from the effects units. It sounds like it is. It sounds almost kind of like a flanger, but there are no effects on this sound. It's the unison that's doing it. And we can prove that by turning it off. No filter sweep. sweep and now having identified what that's doing to the sound take it away so there's our core blue fizz sound and finally we can head back into the modulation matrix and see what um, what effects are being applied in here well we've got the, the sample start thing so this is LFO 1 being applied to layer B LFO 2 was being applied to layer A which is a bit weird Basically, it's doing exactly the same job, introducing variants. Probably the oscilloscope is the best place to see it. Every time I press a note, you get a different shape, as opposed to muted. It's always starting the sample from exactly the same point. What's this mod envelope one doing? We've got something going on with the pitch course. You can't naturally hear any pitch sound, or if your ears are more sensitive than mine, you can, because the value of this thing is absolutely tiny. But if I increase it, it'll really quickly become apparent what it's doing. So at higher levels, we've got a quite dramatic um, pitch drop, but at tiny, tiny levels, it's almost imperceptible. It just gives you that really the tiny flick on the beginning of the pitch um, of, of the tone. It's, it's lovely sound design. And we can see that when we head out of the mod matrix, here's our coarse pitch knob set to 1200 cents. So you've got a, a one octave modulation, but then over the course of, oh, it's almost instantaneous. Let's have a look at uh, Mod Envelope 1. So we've got this sawtooth effect going on. So we start off at plus 12 semitones and then very quickly descend down to zero. Well, how quickly? You can see the speed at which the blue light is getting from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and that's because tiny decay. If I made a bigger decay and gave us a little bit more level, then we'd have you know, a much, much more dramatic, completely different kind of sound. And that's layer B, fully deconstructed. Now that we've dealt with both of the layers and we've absolutely torn them to shreds, we've thrown loads of stuff away as we were like rooting through the drawers. We want to put all that stuff back just by single clicking on the preset, that will reload the preset. And now we can have a look at the effects units. Now, there's no immediate visible evidence of which racks contain effects. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan. I wish they'd give us some kind of indication. So it's best just to go from left to right and have a look at them all. No auxiliary effects. We do have an effect on layer A, so this is just layer A that's got having this effect and it's a retro flanger. Don't forget you've still got that unison sound going on in the background if I turn the flanger off. There's the flange. Uh, no effects on layer B and the common rack, which don't forget all four layers go through the common rack. We've got a tube limiter here. Really subtle gain, very small, just catching any of those sharp peaks that either of the layers might throw out. A nice effect of tube limiters though, is if the, you crank the gain up. You get 
gets on lovely kind of really deep thick bluffs it, it just seems to make everything better so I hope that's illustrated for you that even with a relatively straightforward sound like this it's not desperately complex I wanted to start out with a relatively simple one so that we can stretch our legs and really understand how we're going to deconstruct uh, an Omnisphere preset there's always stuff uh, the interesting stuff to find you know the unison settings were just really nice and you might want to save those as a preset for use elsewhere the tiny little bit of mod one envelope just controlling that little pitch flick that's really lovely so there's always something really interesting to find that I, I can't recommend highly enough getting into the practice of doing preset deep dives if you really want to get to the bottom of the the, the tools this this is an expensive piece of kit you know you really want to make the most of it and i think this is the best way to do it hope you enjoyed it if you did please consider subscribing and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.